We are talking New York Ninja. Now this one is going to take a little bit of explaining. It's actually directed by John Liu and Curtis Spieler. However, there's a little bit of an asterisk here because we have to talk about the circumstances of how this film came to be because it's a little bit complicated and somewhat unique compared to many films. Now, it is listed as a 2021 movie. I, it's the first time this movie has been released, 2021. However, it was actually made in 1984, but it's one of these kind of fabled, long lost movies. Now, it gets a little bit more complicated than this. This movie was never actually finished and uh, the footage was recovered by the company Vinegar Syndrome in its kind of unfinished format, i.e. it was unedited. So Vinegar Syndrome have essentially re-edited the movie. This is why it's got two directors. The original director for the kind of the original footage and someone who has put the kind of edited the footage together to make it a coherent movie. But it got a little bit even more complicated than that, if you can believe it. The audio on the original movie was degraded. Uh, so all the kind of the lines had to be re-recorded and kind of redubbed ultimately, but they didn't actually know what they were saying. So they had to essentially edit the movie and then kind of write a script after the fact to kind of make dialogue um, in the kind of the, in the to, to, to ultimately fit what was happening on screen without actually knowing what the kind of the dialogue was originally. So as such, it's kind of a little bit of a weird movie, um, and we had to kind of factor the factor that in. Uh, when we kind of are talking about it. Now, interestingly, before I even tell you anything more about it, I checked out two reviews for this, and one kind of gave it a kind of a, uh, hammered it with a kind of a really kind of like low review, saying it was just cheesy crap. But I don't think they've kind of looked into the circumstances of how it's kind of come to be. And I think you, you have to kind of um, obviously factor that in when thinking about this movie. But at the same time, the other one was mega positive, just because it was a lost 80s film and it's kind of like has that all 80s cheese and it's that's true but obviously you still have to judge the film by its own merit just because it's a long lost 80s film doesn't mean it's a 10 out of 10. Uh, it might be we'll discuss in a little bit so let me give you the plot synopsis here so it focuses on this character um, whose wife gets murdered and she just found out she was pregnant and ultimately it, he kind of wants revenge. Now he's a martial arts expert and at this kind of time in the 80s, in this particular story at least, there is a rash of uh, crimes involving women getting kind of kidnapped and disappearing off the streets along with kind of various kind of street gangs roaming the kind of city. I mean, in New York in the 80s, you know, it was, it was a little bit of a tough time there. Um, and we discover that there is this kind of, uh, kind of underground cabal, if you like, that are kidnapping women for nefarious circumstances. And, this New York ninja becomes a little bit of a kind of like a, a, a local hero, uh, ultimately trying to kind of stop crime and get revenge on those who have wronged him. What will happen? You will have to watch the movie to find out. So in the 80s, there was this kind of boom of ninja films, and obviously this would have been one of them, uh, along along with many many others. Um, now it kind of sticks out as a little bit of a kind of a a uh, weird retro throwback because we don't really have that kind of craze anymore. It's one of those fads that didn't really kind of last all that long. Um, but it's actually, it's, along with those ninja movies, the thing that reminds me of more than that even is actually Spider-Man. Uh, this movie feels like it's very, very influenced by superhero movies, in particular Spider-Man and to, to a degree Superman. Um, because our kind of our, our main character, who is this kind of like this ninja, secret ninja, you know, he's he's working as a reporter, like a reporter's assistant by day, and is kind of reporting on crimes, and then kind of going out as a this kind of master vigilante uh, and kind of stopping crime with, with his secret, sort of secret identity. Along that, we have the kind of the, the public opinion, and some of which kind of see him as a hero, some of which obviously see him as a menace, and then we have the kind of police and. They don't know what to do with it and things like that. So it really does have that kind of that Spider-Man aesthetic. And it's a little bit, there are some sci-fi elements to it as well. Uh, our bad guy, our main kind of bad guy is actually kind of radioactive um, and has kind of like, you know, sort of science fiction elements to it. 
which is a little bit weird. We'll talk about it. Um, okay, so let's get into it. So I've kind of given you the, the circumstances of the film. I've given you the plot synopsis. Let's talk about what I think works in this film. Okay, now it's, it's hard to judge what the original intention was of this movie. So we can only kind of make some assumptions. I can only assume this wasn't really meant to be a particularly kind of serious movie. The film that we have got with this kind of new dubbing and obviously edited in a certain way um, is quite a campy film. Deliberately obviously made to be like that, but I don't know if necessarily it was the intention of the original director, who also is the star of this film. So we don't quite know, the, you know obviously, the, the tone that this movie was going to. It certainly seemed like it was not meant to be taken too seriously. Uh, that's the kind of like our kind of our gang members, for example, look even crazier than the ones you see out of the kind of the Warriors uh, movie before it. So there's certainly a kind of a level of cheese, but to be honest with you, that that may not have been knowingly camp whilst it was being made. It they could have thought this would be some sort of like futuristic kind of society or something like that. Because let's be honest, we had plenty of the kind of like the post-apocalyptic movies. Um, that came out that were super kind of camp by today's standards in the 80s and things like that. But we can only judge it on the film that we've got in front of us. So it has this kind of like this weird sort of like campy vibe to it. And the, the movie with the kind of the weird dubbing, um, it makes it, it really kind of enhances that. You can't really fault the fact that this movie's been overdubbed and it's got a pretty good, um, you know, talent behind some of the kind of the, the voice actors here, including Michael Berryman, um, Leanna Quigley, uh, Ginger Allen, I think her name is, uh, Donna Dragon Wilson. Um, so a few kind of like, uh, you know, recognisable names, certainly from kind of 80s kind of cinema. Uh, so, you know, it's got a fairly good voice cast, but obviously the, what is being said doesn't match what the people's mouths are doing sort of thing. So, you know, it's kind of, it has this kind of weird feel to it, but, you, you know, you've got to accept that's just the way this movie is. You can't, I don't you can knock it for that. Um, but it gives it this kind of like this funny spoof vibe, even though I don't think it's necessarily a spoof movie and was never really intended to be, but it certainly has that kind of vibe to it. So you can kind of watch this in a kind of like, a kitsch kind of like weird sort of ironic way and enjoy it for the kind of the cheesiness, the kind of the fun um, camping of this, that this, this, this movie really does kind of exude. Um, Outside of that, I, I do think the uh, our lead kind of actor here slash original director is a obviously a, an accomplished martial artist and obviously has some skills on screen. Uh, and we do see lots of kind of a lot of action sequences in this movie. It certainly isn't starved for action sequences. <clears throat> in fact, I would say it's almost to its detriment, which we'll, again we'll talk about in a minute. But there are plenty of kind of like uh, action sequences, and it's kind of fun seeing. New York in the 80s and stuff like that. I mean, you'll see like the two towers and things like this. Um, and it's kind of a fun throwback film, obviously for one that ultimately no one's really ever seen before because obviously it's been it's been in a can for the kind of the entirety of its life until now. So it's kind of nice to almost go back to the kind of the 80s and to a simpler time and kind of enjoy this movie um, and kind of watch its kind of like its cheesiness. And it tries to have a a positive magic. Like I've said, it, it really does feel like it's influenced by the likes of Spider-Man here. Very much kind of like, you know, look after your neighbourhood, try to, you know, look after the kids and things like that. Although there are some adult elements here. There's a couple of, um, uh, you know, uh, kills that are women getting killed. There's a couple, bit of nudity here, a bit of swearing. So it, it's kind of like, not a, a necessarily a kid's film, though it kind of feels like it's like, uh, almost like a, um, a pilot for a kid's sort of action show, if that makes sense. It tries to be somewhat wholesome at the same sort of time. I think our lead character is very likeable. Um, you know, he's kind of a couple of times kind of winking at the camera and kind of smiling and stuff like that. It makes for a kind of, uh, you know, quite a kind of a, a, a likeable kind of um, character. I mean, some of the things, I've got to be honest with you, feel a little bit uncomfortable today. Uh, but on the edge, you can't help but kind of quite like the character. It's ultimately, you know, a, a vigilante revenge flick and, and kind of who doesn't like them. Okay, so let's talk about what doesn't work. Again, I think some kind of uh, apologists will just kind of gloss, gloss, gloss over this and say, oh yeah, Vinica Syndrome have done a great job restoring this film. And they have, they, they've restored it to a, to a great standard, I think, but it doesn't take away from the fact 
you have to be realistic and critical about a film. Um, okay, so this movie is kind of lame, if we're being completely honest. It is just a cheesy action film with... Um, <laughs> as, I mean, as, it, as, as, the, as the plot is kind of put out of this edit, at least, it's just kind of lots of kind of action sequences kind of strung together with the various barest minimum of plot. Uh, no one gets any real characterization. Um, the kind of like the action sequences, although I think our main actor is an accomplished martial artist, the choreography is actually kind of quite poor. And uh, some of the kind of like the reactions to people kind of getting kicked and hit and things like that are somewhat laughable at times. It has to be it has to be kind of, kind of said. Um, so yeah, the, the action sequences are, are are kind of fairly poorly kind of shot. The and there's quite a lot of them to the point where it gets a little kind of samey. We we just see our kind of our ninja kind of like oh this ninja fighting get a group of faceless thugs. Next scene, here's our ninja fighting a group of faceless thugs, etc. Uh, rinse and repeat, really. Um, our kind of our main bad guy, this kind of plutonium killer you know, is really kind of like bizarre, to be completely honest. Uh, you know, he, he has scenes where he's just mugging to the camera for uh, seemingly minutes on end, kind of like doing weird things and thinking, what's actually kind of going on here? It's really kind of poorly kind of explained. And again, I'm not saying that this, this movie was, as I say, it was unfinished. There may have been stuff that was still to shoot, but I can only judge the film that we've got. I can't apologize for stuff which wasn't ever shot. So we have to judge it for what we've got. So, you know, is it worth your time? Um, acting, now, dialogue-wise, as I said, this movie is kind of overdubbed, so you can't really judge the, the, vo the voice acting, I don't think, and the kind of how it's kind of, the, the, the vocals don't match the kind of the, the mouth movements and things like that. But there are some physical acting choices here that I still feel are quite poor. Um, you know, like I said, the people's reactions to kind of fighting, the costuming looks really kind of bizarre. It's like, what, what kind of gangs are these really? It doesn't really, it doesn't really kind of go into any kind of depth. And yeah, it's just kind of ultimately becomes a little bit of a cheesy B movie, to be honest. Now, had this come out in the 80s, it, I honestly don't think it would have been one that would be particularly highly regarded. Um, and yes, Vidika Syndrome have done a good job in restoring this movie. It looks like, it looks probably, you know, one of the best kind of uh, um, you know, quality in regards to kind of picture quality and stuff like that and probably the best job that you could do using this material and I do think it will have its fans for people who like 80s material but I think you've got to be realistic and just not just kind of like gloss over the fact that this movie has some isn't particularly a well-made film by any stretch of the imagination yes it has some entertainment value but it's kind of, it gets kind of dull to be honest with you there's not really a lot there in regards to plot uh, the action sequences aren't particularly kind of thrilling. It isn't particularly kind of gory. There's kind of plot threads here that you don't really feel are, uh, you know, well utilised or kind of tied up. And again, I know that this maybe is an unfinished business, but we have to just look at what we've got. We can't think, oh, I'll give it extra marks because it might have turned out differently. So overall, I'm going to give this one a four out of ten. It's kind of a an interesting watch. You can enjoy this in a sort of ironic, cheesy way. But if you want a legitimately, you know, good action 80s ninja film, there are other choices which I think are, are better and uh, and better made. But there it is. It's a 4 out of 10, an interesting film, and obviously quite a unique set of circumstances has led up to this. So it's worth watching in a way for that. Um, but if, you, if you're looking at a film on its own merits, it's a 4 out of 10. Have you seen it? What do you think of it? Leave me a comment, and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.